and welcome to Protocol Basics. And in today's video, we'll be talking about what type of version of Venom we want in Marvel Spider-Man 2, or at least speculate the type of version of Venom in Marvel Spider-Man 2. And we have a very, very special guest, um, News to Astonish and Star Running. Hello, Marty. Thank you so much for having me here. No worries. So obviously, with Marvel Spider-Man 2, we haven't really had it uh, as a so far. And basically, anything is possible. So when it comes to Venom's character, um, personally, what type of version do you want? Or which other adaptations do you also want in summer to take for that version? Well, before I answer that question, I just want to say for the longest time, like recently for the most part, we've been used to the comical Venom, the anti-hero kind of character, because he's very popular in comics. But for the wa- longest time, I've always wanted to see the villainous, uh, you know, ruthless Venom that we've known before from his like very early days, at least from his very first appearances. So if they can just bring that back in some way, that would be fantastic. So I would love to see that kind of Venom. And perhaps maybe throughout the years in this Marvel Spider-Man franchise, we can see some sort of evolution where Venom starts to lean towards the comic path but for now i just want him to be the ruthless killer not the actual lethal protector that we all know today completely agree i think the lethal protector arc is great but i think that's something that should come after he's already perhaps uh, a solo game uh, uh, yeah exactly i think you know what i think that would be amazing especially when it's something that are basically creating that movie I actually wouldn't be surprised if they're actually doing that right now in the back end because Insomnia Games has so many teams and you just never know. They'll just say, oh, we've been working on a Venom solo title for the longest here. It is blah, blah. You know, they did the same thing with Miles Morales where it just came out of left field. It just came out of nowhere. I'm like, we had no idea they were working on Miles Morales. So um, I wouldn't be surprised if we get like like an overglorified DLC version of a Spider-Man game, but only featuring Venom. But I wouldn't want it to be set in New York. I'm getting ahead of myself here for a second, but I would oh, want no, the Venom game to be set in like uh, California, kind of like in the comics yeah, yeah. where like he ventured off into a solo series and he went to California. He made that agreement with Spider-Man that he will leave him alone. It was uh, awesome. I, I I really enjoy the Lethal Protector series. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I would love that as well. But yeah. Because especially when this is a Marvel universe, it's not just Marvel's New York so it's you know it's gonna they're gonna have to expand on that especially when yeah uh, I mean Marvel's Wolverine really, cannot yeah. be in New York Wolverine can't be on yeah. New York in New York no. um, but I'm yeah. thinking also Wolverine would be kind of like one of those uh, games kind of like how like, The Last of Us and God of War play where it has some sort of open world linear path kind of thing where it, it's semi open but it's not exactly open so I think Wolverine yeah. could be like that as well oh, uh, yeah. just, uh, that's my little speculation about Wolverine aside <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, this year something for that as well. But yeah, I completely agree. I think if they even choose to have Logan be in New York by the end of the game, I think that'd be fantastic. Um, yeah. But when it comes to you know, Venom, I hundred percent agree. I feel, I feel like they need to do a villainous version of Venom at first. Right. Keep um, him straight from Venom. Yeah. Exactly. Who can't like? You want to tell jokes with him? That's fine. You know. But I don't think they should overdo it. Basically, um, and just like show how much of a savage he could be, and how much of a dangerous character he is. Just especially when he's one of the few if not the only characters to basically not alert his five senses and knows like, his secrets inside Ex- his exactly I mean the most that they can do if they ever want to allude or like to those comical references of, of Venom Venom can probably like say or do something that's unintentionally hilarious but it wasn't you know made to be funny <laughs> like like I guess yeah. that's what it, it is unintentionally hilarious but keep it at the bare minimum at the very least because yeah. I, I think <laughs> people have gotten way too used to that character by now i mean he was like that from the beginning in the venom films i know venom like it like the venom movies do borrow some quotes and references from the actual comic books and they do borrow some references to how he is today in comics but popularity goes a long way so you know people just want to see venom like the way they know him to be now uh but they got to bring him back down to his roots after all this is an entirely different universe for marvel's spider-man yeah for sure especially when like this teases that you know like to and obviously it's going to be a much darker game yeah, as well exactly. like comparing it yeah comparing it to Empire Strikes Back which obviously Empire Strikes Back isn't the darkest film ever but when it comes to the other Star Wars films it oh is my pretty God. dark yeah, yeah. I actually got a lot of flag for that in like one of my shorts talking about how dark Marvel Spider-Man will be. And people were like just making like a lot of jokes about how I said dark like eight times in the one minute video. And I uh, sort of just started having fun with it. And I started giving people like hilarious.
hilarious responses to that. Yeah. I got like a couple of people saying like, oh, take a sip every time he says the word dark. I would respond with, well, uh, listen, is the party still going? Because I'm like kind of drunk right now. <laughs> So like I, I I I it's just one of those things that like I didn't realize I'd said dark that many times, but like I was in the heat of the moment. I was like passionate for like that one minute short, just talking yeah. about uh, about how like this could probably be the darkest game, uh, darkest Spider-Man game. But yeah. some of the people say, "Oh, hold my web of shadows," or uh, "Web of shadows has entered the chat," and people were just assuming I've never played Web of Shadows because that is like the darkest <laughs> Spider-Man game right now. But I love Web of Shadows, yeah. but I think yeah, it has the too. potential to be darker than Web of Shadows. Oh yeah, for sure. Web Web of Shadows is it's not a very grounded game, mm -hmm. but I do think it, Marvel Spider-Man 2 has the potential to be darker because I do believe Marvel Spider-Man 2 will be way more grounded than Web of Shadows because it, Web of Shadows was basically an alien invasion just with the symbiote and uh, obviously with Marvel Spider-Man 2 it's going to be about, you know, it's, it's more or less going to be like a character game, basically just exploring Peter Parker and who he is at the end of the day. So obviously they're going to basically dig into that as well as basically use uh, Venom and obviously the black suit to show kind of do what No Way Home did show Peter Parker's dark side but show like by the end he will obviously overcome that and show why he's basically the greatest hero of all time yeah and um, we're gonna see definitely a lot of growth from Spider-Man himself in this um, game he is gonna be just a little bit older I, I would presume he'd be about a year past uh, Miles Morales so I would presume he's 25 in this game and Agreed. we're gonna see him go through a lot of trials and tribulations He's going to learn from a lot. He's going to go through different, like a roller coaster of emotions. And I think the black suit is going to be a huge effect on him. It's going to play a large role in that game. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing that and how he grows as a character and how he becomes a better hero. Oh yeah, me too. And uh, I also wanted to ask, um, what adaptation do you want in Sonya to take the most? Uh, it doesn't have to be one specific adaptation. Oh uh, no, there's so many. I have so many yeah. ideas. One of my favorite, okay, this one is not a symbiote storyline. However, one of my favorite darker Spider-Man stories doesn't involve the actual symbiote black costume, but it does involve a black costume. It's the back in black storyline where Spider-Man oh. just goes off the rails because of uh, his Aunt May being injured and hospitalized. And he literally goes after Kingpin in prison to come after him and like beat the living crap out of him. Uh, even his mask is off and like all the prisoners can see him and he doesn't really care. He's just blinded by anger and his rage is what motivates him to go after Kingpin. Some elements could be borrowed from that as far as like the rage qualities and it could be applied to the sequel. I would also like to see some references to, like to the ultimate comic books because I doubt that they would be going with the alien origin storyline. But then again, who yeah. knows? Maybe they would. Maybe it's a special that they found and they decided to amplify or like, augment it in some sort of way to make it more of like a, a living organism or um, so sort of, some sort of experiment. I, I don't know. I'm just like spitballing here, but there's just so many elements that they can borrow from different comics and I'm sure no doubt Insomniac is seeking that in inspiration from the comic books. As it is, Tony Todd is doing research from the of the character and I think Insomniac yeah. Games, uh, being that the Spider-Man fans that they are, they probably gave Tony Todd you know, the right directions as to where to find the inspiration from so um, I'm pretty sure they're borrowing a lot from the classic comic books oh yeah 100% yeah the classic 616 uh, storylines and as well as the ultimate storylines as well because some of them are clearly taking some things from them uh, yeah whether or not it's going to be a thing that they created uh, like the ultimate comics that was designed to be a medicine uh, mm -hmm. probably in this universe specifically for Harry's uh, illness or you know a alien creature which could definitely be the case because I, I do believe in Miles Morales they did hit that uh, ask for space equipment so like equipment that's used basically to go into uh, space yeah, yeah so Norman uh, Osborn does a lot of funding so he probably exactly. could have been funding a space program as well oh 100% you never know maybe J. Jonah Jameson's son is was somehow involved or something probably like that. Yeah. Uh, did J. Jonah yeah. Jameson I don't remember if J. Jonah Jameson ever mentioned having a son in this universe yeah. but if he does or like in the in the sequel if he brings him up I don't know where it's like, oh, uh, well, there was no setup for that, but a little nice reference, yeah. it would have been okay. Kind of like how in the first game, there was a subtle reference in genetic manipulation or genetic experimenting with Norman Osborn back when Dr. Octavius was with Norman finding Oscorp and then Octavius considered what Norman was doing was unethical. And I think that was a hint to like the Green Goblin. So yeah. I, I would have loved like those planted Easter eggs um, in the first game yeah. from at least from J. Jonah Jameson. Speaking of J. Jonah, oh, yeah, like, I, I would love to see it, at least him in the 
the sequel as well, but actually interaction oh, yeah. with him. <laughs> oh, yeah, me too. I mean, heck, right, because Peter's in the black suit, maybe, like, no. he's <laughs> just one moment where he just goes up to James. Yeah. He almost, like, well, not, not almost kill him, but almost, like, he threatens him. Like, yeah, yeah. He yeah. Threatens, like, I would uh, love to crash into the bugle <laughs> and just like, exactly. well, not the bugle, oh, but like his podcast, his podcast, like he doesn't work at the bugle anymore, but I like to crash into his yeah. actual podcast and like oh, grab him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just like, Hey, like you need to stop this. This is slammed up and he's like, That's like yeah. <laughs> everything, everything is actually, um, while with the black suit, um, just about everything would get to Peter at that point. Like his, his own exactly. emotions would only be amplified. Yeah. <clears throat> oh yeah. 100%. And, uh, when it comes to Venom specifically, like what version of Venom do you want Insomniac like, to draw the most from? Like the animated Spider-Man series, uh, Spectacular Spider-Man, the ultimate uh, version of Venom, 616? Well, as, as, as it is, um, like audio speaking, audio wise, uh, Venom is very reminiscent in this version of the classic um, animated series from the 90s, at least the way he sounds whenever I hear uh, Venom speak in this short Marvel Spider-Man 2 teaser. So if I had to pick, I, I would want a comic combination of two Venoms that I personally am a fan of. One is of the classic 90s Venom. And I would also want inspiration drawn from the actual animated series. Because I don't think Venom has been done as well as like the actual animated series, in my opinion. Um, because yeah. you watch and uh, you watch other animated like Spider-Man series is like Spectacular Spider-Man. Of course, that uh, horrible Disney Ultimate Spider-Man series. Um Venom is just not done <laughs> you know, too well. Yeah. yeah, that doesn't exist. We don't I mean, talk they about didn't reduce they didn't reduce any product. Yeah. So you know, I've attempted to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> it's horrible. Yeah, yeah. Um, they used Harry instead. Which is yeah. which is something in some day I might be doing. I don't know how that would work. I'm you still know, dead set happens. in thinking that it's not Harry. Yeah, me too. It's not. Him. It's just not that easy. Insomniac will do like a a shift. Like they will like they will like pull a fast one and be like, "You thought we were gonna actually do Harry just because he was in that tank with the symbiote? Come on!" Like it's just people. It's just people are talking about it like it's factual, but really they don't know. <laughs> they never said anything about Harry actually being Venom. And when we saw Venom in that teaser, like you can't just say like, "Oh, that totally looks like it's Harry underneath there." <laughs> yeah. But um, I don't think it's. Harry, man, I don't think it's that easy. I don't think it's that simple. I don't think I don't think it's Harry either. It could be Harry, but yeah, uh, right. maybe oh, from I the do. start. But like the yeah. actual Venom persona is developed by somebody who has hatred or something like the monstrosity. Harry doesn't have any exactly. hatred towards Peter Parker, and I don't think this version of Harry has any hatred towards Spider Man. No, as, as far as we know, no, he doesn't. Obviously, like things could change in the story. Like maybe Norman might manipulate him, but, uh, but obviously that would have to take a while for him to do that. And you, you know, I don't think it's something would be the type to like rush a storyline just to like get right. a character from point A to point B. Um, right, right, exactly. Yeah, but yeah, in terms of adaptations for me, I think obviously 616 would basically is the foundation, but yeah. if they could take obviously stuff from the uh, 90s anime series, like you said, uh, I think that would be phenomenal. That was like my first introduction to Venom and to the, basically to the Marvel Universe in general. So if they take stuff from that version, I think I would love that. Uh, I don't want to protect the Spider-Man as well. Uh, I love that version. Um, obviously, I think in that version, I think he was a bit too ruthless because he went after Peter's family. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and Venom but doesn't really. Do that's that. uh, that's safe. That's yeah. safe to use because the game would be, I assume, rated T for Teen with like some elements that are like a little bit inappropriate for anybody under like fourteen or thirteen or whatever. Um, yeah. but I, I would love to see that. Like, it's that torment that I want to see. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Venom. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you friends Mary Jane or Miles, I think that could like, I think that would be enough to basically put Peter over the edge. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. you know how like. Uh, uh, the Batman Arkham Knight series, um, at least Batman Arkham Knight ended up being rated M for Mature, but while the other ones ended up being rated T for Teen. Yeah. You think there's actual groundwork for a Marvel Spider-Man game to be actually rated M for Mature for at least like a lot of violent, gory elements? Maybe perhaps in like the third one, it could probably be like foreshadowing like the end of Spider-Man and that they would have to oh, go yeah. above and beyond in those like violent themes, you know, and really make it like a real final showdown. 
moment like spider-man's like yeah. last moments you think they would probably go for like a rated m mature rating for like at least oh. the third spider-man game yeah no, that's that's an amazing question um green goblin honestly, i mean would, would probably be like the final vote uh the foe excuse oh, me yeah. and um i think you know green goblin when it comes to villainy uh, like at least spider-man's essential or i guess you can say worst villain is green goblin because he's gone through the ends of the earth to actually torment peter parker like psychologically emotionally physically everything and i think because of the way he is i, I think there's groundwork for mature themes you know so yeah, yeah. spitballing here um, i think no I, f- I think you're onto something because you know I, if it wasn't the ogre i don't know if i would have said they would do a mature spider-man game uh, uh m-rated spider-man game however because you know of the villains that they're gonna choose it like that i would see for the third game the green goblin and the green right. goblin like you said he's back like obviously he may not be the most powerful or strongest villain that he has faced he is by far the most dangerous because of the things he's done um, i mean like he's done some of the most messed up things that the Marvel is uh so i depending on the direction something goes i definitely think so obviously it's gonna have like very very dark moments because obviously the first game had its dark moments um so obviously this is probably going to be dialed up a bit so never say no i think there's a chance that that game will mature um if it if it's really teen uh, that's fine in my opinion yeah. but obviously if, if they do come out and say hey Marvel's Spider-Man 3 will be really hell that would be like okay cool like i wouldn't be surprised like you. anything that would get me even more excited exactly like i've always been curious about how a mature spider-man game would be like um but if if they're gonna do it anyway where they would just cap it yeah. off um i think a third game in the in the franchise would be the perfect way to like close things at least and then allow miles to take over from then yeah for sure yeah, yeah. I think depending on the even if they choose to have Peter retire, have him get married to MJ, uh, which they kind of set up in the uh, first DLC with Black Cat, um, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be against that. Yeah, um, me either. I would like yeah. to have I would like Peter to have a happy ending as well. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, me too. But yeah, guys, that, uh, that'll be all. Please, 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 after you watch this video, check out Ronnie's channel, News to Astonish. It'll be linked in the description down below and in the card above. Um, he does amazing, amazing content on Marvel Spider-Man 2 uh, and Marvel, Marvel stuff in general, as well as uh, DC stuff. So please, whatever you do, check his channel out. He also does live streams, so be sure to check us out as well. Thank you what for else having can... me here, Marty. No, no worries. Uh, what else can they find you, Ronnie? Everybody, you can also find me on any of my social media links which you can find in the description box below of any of my videos on my channel. Simply click on any video. Uh, I have an Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and a Twitch. The handle to all those social medias is just simply News to Astonish. So if you go to any of those social media sites, just look up at News to Astonish altogether and you will find me there. Perfect. No worries. And also in the comments below, let us know what version of Venom would you like to see in Marvel's Spider-Man 2 and also which storylines you want to see in the game. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter if you enjoyed this video please like and want more subscribe to begin for the cafe six and have a good one and i'll see you all in the next comic panel